Good morning, folks. Many of you are already familiar with the collective and how it can help you catch up if you're new to the community. I and other observers will begin contributing to the blog stories soon, and we'll get some special reports enhancing the premium content as well. Mr. Loafer Loafer's built quite the resource here, and while we kept our efforts separated while we matured the sites, the integration is going to be better for everyone. Next, we have an official Twitter feed, sort of. The real S0S, that's a zero, not an O. This is not going to be interactive with a lot of posting. It is for stuff that I think is important enough to potentially interrupt what you're doing at that very moment. Obviously does not happen every day, and that's what you should expect from this. Up next, you know this as the solar polar fields, and it's beginning to take on new meanings as we use solar magnetics to forecast everything from weather to earthquakes. Speaking of those... We have multiple videos showing that the biggest earthquakes since a number of solar anomalies in 2007 and 2008 have all been correlated with coronal hole activity. And we are not the only ones showing it. This is way old news. But if we're going to use coronal holes, solar wind power, blocking fields above, well then we should look here as well. Let me overlay those last 10 8 magnitude earthquakes or bigger. Folks, we're looking only at the magnetic peaks and troughs. And if you use the Stanford site I showed you yesterday, you'll see how darn incredible this is. So far in going into seven pointers, the correlation appears better than one would expect at random. Obviously not as well as the big ones, and we're still going there. But I invite you to see if you also notice whether we might be able to discern upticks or the quiet periods based not only on how far our metrics are from the baseline, but in looking at every peak, trough, and crossing of the baseline. Unusually long lulls appear to occur at mutually low magnetics like we have now and had for the 2012 and 2013 midsummer quake droughts. The cross of the dark central unbroken line could matter, and in these latter years we're also going to look at the crossing of the red and blue of the baseline and of each other. No shortage of work to be done. The watches themselves are switching to letters to avoid the confusion that the number percentages are giving some people with magnitude. I use a plus and a minus like B plus, C minus when needed as well. A's and E's will be rare. You get the idea. Let's come to today's featured article, and it's infuriating. If you caught my chemistry and electrostatics based argument against GMOs and accelerated vaccine schedules, you'll know where I fall on this. If not, short summary would be an example of a blog edition. For people like me to see animals literally falling apart because of human greed makes me want to tear down walls. The damage from Cyclone Christine in West Australia does appear to be minimal. Big action to the southeast, it appears. Across the Indian Ocean, hopefully everyone living here is on alert by now. Europe, you'll catch a break sometime around May. I'm joking, but it feels that way, doesn't it? Gulf heat and moisture drug up to meet cooler air for some rain and major snow in the east. Alaska and West Canadian coastlines eyeing a blustery low as well. Solar wind is right around average. Some small perturbations are affecting the shield, but not enough to cause any kind of significant disturbance. The top solar story of the day is the M6 solar flare that came out of that exact same delta spot we focused on for days. If you've been watching, folks, it's that easy to know where the flare is going to happen. As you can see, however, most of the plasma fell back to the sun. A tiny CME is all there is as the sun's magnetic weakening leaves an M6 unable to pop a significant CME. That's as telling as it gets. Stereos are unhelpful as they're either not showing any 2014 data or have 18 hours missing, respectively. The planets are closing in on that rapid-fire set of conjunctions. Coronal hole facing Earth with stream on the way and fields open. We've been lucky so far with the quaking as the watch extends into the new year as predicted. Today's earthquake uptick score is at an A-. It's one of the highest scores we'll ever have. Heck of a way to start the new year. Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.